Welcome back to class. My name is Naya Abernathy. I am your professor here at the Dignity Ambassador Academy. We are outside with birds, with uh, human made noise, <laughs> with lots of sun. And so um, I hope that wherever you are, you are also enjoying um, your environment and your space. And I hope that's not too loud. Uh, okay, so before we dive into today's class, around dignity and emotions, the first thing we're gonna do is lay our foundation of dignity. And that is the intrinsic worth and value each being carries that cannot be taken away. That's our dignity definition that we start from. That means that you have dignity. I have dignity. Your neighbor has dignity. Your neighbor that you kinda wish wasn't your neighbor has dignity. The birds, trees, water, air, uh, animals, all that we're interconnected to holds a worthiness and a value and an enoughness uh, that helps to inform the way that we move through the world when we pay attention, recognize, and honor that. So that is the, the grand invitation of uh, what, what we're here doing. And so at, today we're going to talk about uh, difficult emotions and how there's dignity in honoring our difficult emotions. First, why do we even have difficult emotions? What makes them difficult, right? There's a lot of things. Um, societal norms uh, can uh, kind of tell us uh, what is a good or a bad emotion, what is right or wrong, what is acceptable or not acceptable. We can also have cultural uh, structures and norms that um, feed into that same um, either or of our emotional experiences. Um, how we have or have not seen emotions expressed. So this like comes back to uh, our family, how we grew up or the community that we grew up with and, and what emotions maybe were welcomed and what emotions were maybe not talked about um, or not honored and acknowledged. Uh, this emotional morality problem, which we talked about uh, in the last class around emotions, having a good or bad at all, right? Emotions are amoral. Uh, they are not good or bad. You don't have to judge them. They simply are. And often uh, they're coming to communicate something to, to kind of let you know where you are. And uh, they can be welcomed for that, for that purpose. And then a lot of times the, the somatic or the, the bodily sensations that we feel uh, in conjunction to our emotional experience can also make emotions very difficult. And so as we are exploring uh, our, our vast and our whole uh, emotional catalog, which this is not a comprehensive catalog, but the emotion wheel is helpful as we, uh, as we are identifying, especially more nuanced emotions, um, taking good care of yourself. Like, what do you need, right? Uh, how are you grounding? Are you paying attention to your breath? Is it helpful to slow your breath down? Um, you paying attention to what you need. Do you need other support around you, someone else? Do you need to take a walk outside? These are all things that support you as you start to open up and, and uh, receive emotions that maybe in the past you kind of haven't. And so I want to encourage this uh, reality that we honor our dignity and our worthiness and we practice wholeness when we acknowledge and affirm our emotions. Just simply acknowledging that the emotion is there is a huge step instead of ignoring it, brushing it under the rug. And so as you continue to do that, uh, practicing and uh, taking care of yourself um, somatically through the process, it's going to be super important as well. We're going to get into some of those practices and explore a little bit more about difficult emotions in the next class. I'll see you there.